This is Sunday Focus, a weekly public affairs program that looks at the topics affecting our society and the people who are making a change in the community each and every day. The people who have vision for the next generation. Sunday Focus presents new challenges for us, keeping you informed with topics of local and regional interest. Now the host of Sunday Focus, Christine Manica. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. We always like to focus on a lot of great organizations here in the Sioux Empire. And one of them that we haven't really talked a lot about on this show is the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls. And joining us right now, he is the CEO for the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls, Eric Weber, otherwise known as Pastor Pineapple. <laughs> Good morning, Eric. <laughs> Good how morning. are you? I am wonderful. How are you? We're doing great. You know, this is your first time here on the program. You're a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll make it nice and painless for you. Now, tell us about the Union Gospel Mission. So, what is it all about? So, yeah, the Union Gospel Mission is uh, 19, it started in 1900s by a uh, lady, um, Mother Wheaton and Thomas Morris, which was a criminal. And actually, he was um, killed a guy and he was put in prison and he was um forgiven by the, the governor of South Dakota. And he decided when he got out that there was no place for people like him. So he would decided that he needed to uh, do a homeless shelter somewhere. And so they actually started a homeless shelter downtown Sioux Falls in the 1900s. And, um, it, and it's still here today. Yeah. How many people would you say benefit from this organization? Just Maybe in the last couple of years or so. In the last couple of years, I would say roughly twenty five to thirty thousand. Okay, people benefit because we have anywhere from volunteers to uh, people in need, people that need shelter, moms, dads, you know those things. So it's it's not just we serve the poor; we serve everybody that wants to come in. What's the mission of the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls? Yeah, our mission is caring for the needs of the community. With compassion by sharing the hope of Jesus. And so with that, they get shelter, food, um, clothing, uh, medical help, um, case management, and our favorite, stability. Yeah. And you have an interesting story. There's a reason why I say Pastor Pineapple, because before we started this interview, he said in the middle of the introduction, I said, okay, Eric Weber, and you said Eric Pineapple Weber, and I'm like, I can't say that. That's not your real middle <laughs> name, but there's actually a story behind it. So, Eric, why don't you tell us about yourself? Yeah, so um, I grew up in Hawaii. Um, aloha. And yeah, aloha. <laughs> mahalo. And so, uh, growing up in Hawaii, moved to Los Angeles uh, when I was 12 years old, ended up in gangs, unfortunately. Um, so, I kind of lived a little rough patch of life. Um, then I decided, uh, as I was in prison to follow Jesus. And so I get out of prison. I end up going to school, became a pastor. And my mom was like, pastor pineapple <laughs> in front of everybody. And when I was younger, my nickname was pineapple, um, native Hawaiian, my hair stuck up and it would not fold. So my mom was like, Okay, that's my pineapple head. And so um, so that was my nickname growing up. And when I became a pastor, my mom in front of like, I don't know, 15, 1600 people uh, announced that I was Pastor Pineapple now instead of just Eric. And um, then it stuck. So for many years throughout um, all of Sioux Falls in Los Angeles and around, everybody knew me as Pineapple. Oh, my gosh. So I actually like that story. Yeah. So you think of your mom every time you hear Pastor Pineapple. I do. I don't know if I blame her, but it's um, <laughs> it's pretty interesting because we, um, growing up, you know, she's like, Pineapple, come here. And, you know, can you imagine in the grocery store, people like, that lady's talking to a pineapple. You know? so, <laughs> and so, but that was my nickname. It's yeah. just, a, it was a hair thing. Um, to this day, I still have the ha hair, same hairstyle I had when I was 10, you know, um, because my hair just doesn't fold. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. you go from Hawaii to California, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. How, how does that happen? Yeah. So Sioux Falls, South Dakota, um, my when I was in California, um, I had a drug problem. My wife drugged me to Sioux Falls, and so that was my problem. So, you know, so, I, 
So, so I didn't want to go. Oh, uh, but we had twins in 2004. And right away, my wife was like, oh, we can't do this. I don't have any help. And so she had twins right off the bat. So we had twin girls. Um, 14 months later, we have another one. So we decided, yeah, let's move to this area and see what it's like. And we moved here, and I had no clue of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I I knew there was like a river through it. My wife says, oh, yeah, you can raft it. And I'm like, oh, rafting, that's awesome. We'll bring my kayaks. And, you know, and I was like, it's going to be awesome. And then I get here, and I'm like, I'm not putting my feet in that water. <laughs> <laughs> so um so she basically drugged me here yeah um but it's it's good we're able to raise my kids here and it's been very good they've been involved in the mission for since they were babies uh eight years old playing violin in front of everybody and just encouraging people so we've been there for a long time uh volunteering and it's kind of funny because it's on eighth and weber and my daughter walked out one day and says dad you're going to uh, own this place. And I'm like, own this place? You can't own a place. It's a nonprofit. She's like, but you're going to work here because it has your name on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, don't do that to me. So, so but anyways, we ju- it just stuck. And we just been volunteering. And then all of a sudden, things happen. Yeah. Side note, I recently met you during a Health Connect event, yes. the mocktail for the winter event. And I'm a twin. So I just now found that out, and I loved hearing your story, and I I was very interested about more with the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls and what you do with the organization, and and you do have a great story, and you can share more if you like about your involvement with the organization and how you became the CEO now four years ago. Yeah, so what ended up happening is um, when I came to the mission, it was failing, Um we had it had a good long run with the, the people that were um, running the place, and um, they were doing okay. And then when um, the board came to me and said, hey, can you take over? The mission's failing. And I was like, what do you mean? So we cracked open the books, and we looked what was happening. And the intern people that were taking um, over at that time um, – was about to sell the mission. And so the mission was looking like it was going to close. I opened up the books. We had $38,000 in the bank and we had a $68,000 a month payroll. Um, so, it, you know, it didn't work. The numbers just don't work. So when I came in, it was either fix it or sell it. And so I decided that let's try to fix it. Let's try to make this thing a go. Let's try to, um, you know, I, I, I'm a man of faith. So I said, all right, God, your job, not mine. Like, if you want your house to stay open, you you, you bring it in. Um, but he used me to do that. He used, because I have connections all over the world and, and places. And so I called on some of my friends and they really helped us out. Um, and so that's December uh, 10th of 2019 when I took over. And then um, the first year was You know, the first December was bumpy. Um, I didn't know how we were going to do it. We were going into foreclosure. We were six months back on our rent and six months back on um, utilities. And and I I thank God that they can't turn off your gas um, in the winter (laughs) because uh, because we owed them a lot of money. And we were six months behind there, too, as well. Um, By January 1, I would say we caught I got us caught up. We paid off a lot of our bills. And um, we got caught up. We were able to pay employees as well. So it was it was pretty wild at the time. So I stepped in, kept on moving along, pushing forward, and, and doing my best to really talk to people in our community. Um, made the mission where it wasn't all by itself anymore an island. Um, and we've had uh, your guys' radio stations help, and yeah. Don, he, he really stepped up and helped us And during that hard time, and a lot of other people in this community stepped up. Friends from, of mine from New York stepped up and really said, hey, we believe in what you're doing, we're going to help. And so it was pretty amazing that um, the community that came together to save the mission. So I really didn't save the mission. It was the, our community and it was our donors and it was people that knew that we're going to try to change it and um, and do something different to serve the people better and to serve the people that work there better, too. So that was my goal. And four years later, here we are. Um, it's all changed. It's We've had 
bumpy times, good times. We had COVID, you know, <laughs> we, we, we had, we had that, we had, uh, you know, all these things that happen, but we're doing so much more, so much better uh, things for this community. Yeah, absolutely. If you were just listening, I'm being joined by Eric Weber. He is the CEO for the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls. Yeah, besides those first couple of months with those bumpy roads for your time as CEO, what were some other challenges along the way since you did bring up COVID? What was that experience like for you? Probably something that you never thought would happen. Yeah, so I had a really good job before I um, became part of the mission and became CEO. Um, I, I was doing really awesome stuff and having fun doing it and um, almost retired. And then um, the mission called, and December 10th, I stepped in. March 15th, COVID started, and I was like, whoa. Taking over a broken mission during a pandemic is something else, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you take over something that is already a mess and then you add a pandemic on top of it? And then you're getting all these calls from the Department of Health and COC and the mayor and the governor. And they're all saying, hey, what are you doing about, you know, social distancing and all that stuff? And, and I had to say nothing. I'm doing nothing about it. Um, we're feeding a lot of homeless people. We're feeding people and we can't do nothing about it. They go outside and they sh share liquor bottles and cigarettes with each other and whatever. We really can't do anything about it. Okay, so I'll put instead of five at a table or six, I'll do four. Um, but we're still going to feed people. We're still going to sleep people and we're not going to close and we're just going to get through it. And we did. We didn't have that many people sick with COVID at the mission. It was wild. And it was like, but I, I, I leave it to this. Um, a lot of our guests that come to the mission and that were staying at the mission, um, they didn't have a TV. So they really didn't know that they were sick. Mm. They, they probably didn't know what was going on either. They couldn't really uh, understand or, um, or really comprehend COVID and, right. and all that went with it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? So yeah. um, when we told them they needed to wear a mask, everybody's like, why do we need to wear a mask? Mm -hmm. And they're like, and so we had to tell them, well, you need to wash your hands now. And you guys need to kind of, you know, not hang out together so much and like separate and just kind of do those things. And people were like, why? And I'm like, well, we have this pandemic going on. It's called COVID and you can get very sick and die. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they're already at their rock bottom. Yeah. Right. They're already at that place where they think, OK, well, maybe it's better off that I am dead than alive. You know, um, a lot of them think that way. And but we didn't. We just continued feeding people, um, washing hands and masking up. A lot of volunteers disappeared. It was wild. It was like crickets. But and then a lot of people when I first when the day COVID hit and said that they called and they said, hey, this is a thing. A pandemic's happening. That night, I lost six employees. Mm. They just vanished. They were like Houdini. Ping, gone, you know? <laughs> and, and so, but what's crazy is I still paid them for a year because I knew they were older. I knew that they could get sick and they yeah. had some health issues. And, and I'm like, all right, well, you know what? I get it, but I'm still going to pay them because I don't want them to be without. It's not their fault that we have this issue that's going on. And so I ended up just making sure that we are good and they are good. It's no secret that Sioux Falls is growing every year. Shelters across the Sioux Empire have been operating at full capacity, including the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls. So how have you guys responded to this growth? Yeah, it's been really bumpy responding to the growth because we're, you know, when you are jam packed and other shelters are jam packed and there's no room for a 12 year old boy with his mom and a 16 year old in this town and they go to a, a just not so nice of a place or to a, you know, a hotel that is not good for them. Um, you start thinking about what can you do better? So we decided um, let's build. And so we started building our third floor at the union gospel mission. And that is a family center. Well, it'll house a mom with a four year old and a 16 year old boy. Our women's center houses um, 11, you know, moms with 11 years and under, but any age girl. So we have the facilities now. We're, we're almost done. We're working on it. Construction is one of those things where it just continues to uh, a little delay here, a little bit delay there, but we are going to be open, you know, this year.
And that's very exciting for you guys. So when people come to the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls, what are they looking for besides shelter? Are they looking to start a new chapter in life, financial assistance, anything like that? Yeah, usually when people come to the Union Gospel Mission, at first they're, they hit rock bottom. They, you know, or they're running or fleeing or they're was in a domestic or their PO dropped them off. And, you know, so they're really looking for a change because we have rules at the mission. Um, and basically, don't be high, don't be drunk and we'll help you um, because you can't really work with somebody that's under the influence very well at all. It's, there's no reasoning there. So what we do is we're like. If you want to start your life over, we're going to definitely help you do that. We'll help you get better. We have case managers, community health workers. We can find you housing, but we can get you wraparound services. We can get you uh, treatment services and things like that. So we have a lot of ways that we can help people with clothing and getting that free clothing distribution we have. Um, getting helping them get jobs and things like that. We have all those things. Budget management, we have that too as well. We're trying to help people understand that, hey, um, when you got your check for COVID, you know, you didn't need a big screen TV. You needed to pay your rent um, or something like that. But a lot of people um, went out and bought TVs and new cell phones and, you know, all the cool stuff. And But they forget about the, the stuff that you really need, like mm, pay your rent or pay your utility bill or something like that to keep you in your house during that time. So we teach people to do something better. Everybody that comes in has to do a chore. Um, so they're part of the solution, not the problem. So it's, we're not a bed and breakfast. We're basically a place where they can get help, but we're going to make them put skin in the game. And you talked about your chef is actually pretty talented. When we first met, you were telling me, oh, yeah, chef just made um, this and this. And mm-hmm. you can just go into detail about that. Yeah. So our chefs, uh, I have three amazing chefs and they the one's from Hawaii and he cooks really good. So, you know, uh, it's so they make food that don't touch. So they're making so you don't need a casserole for everything. You know, I, when I grew up in, in Hawaii, it was there's was not there wasn't such thing as casseroles. It was <laughs> unless it was sushi. Right. That's the casserole. Right. right. But in there, it's like everything had its spot. And, they, you know, like chicken had its spot and rice had its spot and salad had its spot and green beans. had. They just didn't mix it all together. You know, so when I first got to the mission, I called it gloop. Because they would, um, the cooks would gloop stuff on the plate, and it looked like glue. It looked like glue, like with <laughs> something in it, you know. And I was like, "Oh!" But what's great is that my chefs came in intentionally, and I said, "Cook good. We buy a lot of good food, and we get a lot of good food. Cook the best for people that are coming in. It could be their last meal. So let's treat them the best. Like we we need to take pride and give it one hundred and ten percent of what we're doing." to make sure that people are getting a great meal and 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 they're going to eat it. Because then if they eat the meal, then I spend less money on trash. So it all works out, you know. And if they're <laughs> full and, and hungry or not hungry and they're full and they're like, I, am, I can't eat no more, then they sleep well. So then you don't have problems at night. So there, there's all these things that go on to where even the cooks are, are gearing up to like, how can we make this guy at night? feel content and that he's not going to be hungry at midnight where he'll stay asleep. So then when there's less, when people are sleeping, there's less chaos. Yeah. The logic, it's simple logic right there. (laughs) It's simple, but not a lot of people think about that. You know, I mean, it's a lot of people think, well, if we just give them something that they should be grateful and happy, but I'm like, yeah, we can give them something and they should be grateful and happy, but usually they're not. You know, because they don't come from a place of gratitude right now because they are rock bottom. They are having to live in a shelter. They don't have the like, oh, thank you so much for the food. Some do, but 90 percent. No, they're like, give me some food. I had a guy come up to me one time and he complained about our food. He's like, I don't like this and I don't eat this and I don't like that. And I said, hey, give me a receipt and I'll give you your money back. And he didn't have a receipt, so I couldn't give him his money back. Oh, wait, it was free. So, you know, so we're helping these guys. And some are like, no gratitude. And I tell our chefs all the time, it's okay. They're in this place where they are in need. And when you're in need and you're desperate, everything's out the window. So let let us work through this. And as they and as guests stay longer at the mission, they're so thankful for the food. 
They're like, oh, this was so good. You know, can I have seconds? And that's what I love when a guy comes up and he goes, can I have more? Can I have more? <laughs> and I'm like, we're like, okay, let everybody eat first and then we'll give you more because I don't want any leftovers, <laughs> you know? So, and then, so we get rid of a lot of food really fast and yeah. it's really great because they're eating the food. So if they're eating the food, that means my trash bill is less. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just listening, we're being joined right now with Eric Weber. He is the CEO for the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls. Can you tell us any success stories from people that have come to the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls? You know, someone that has benefited from the services that you guys provide. Oh, there are plenty. There's one story that I, uh, there's a lady that works with us now. She actually was homeless when I got there. And she had addiction issues and a bunch of other things. And um, she just got out of jail. She was trying to get her kid back. And so she stayed with us. And so we worked with her, worked with her. And about a year and a half in, um, she was doing really good. She was clean. She got her kid back, uh, still living with us. And finally, we got her housing. And um, she was just, she was dynamite. And she still is. So um, I said, hey, come work in the Women's Center and because you have that lived experience that you can help a lot of these other women figure it out. And she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, just try it. Just give it a shot. So she gave it a shot. Um, it, wor- it went on for probably about seven months. She did really good. And she goes, I just can't do this anymore. People trigger me. And I go, yep, I get it. I get it. So she left for about two months. And so um, I called her back up one day and I said, hey, I have another position for you. And she says, okay, what is it? And I says, community health worker. You're going to have to go to school and um, get your degree. And I'll put you through that. I'll pay for the class. And so she went through with, went through the school with two other people. Um, they went through the school too. She was the only one that had the real life experience that was from the streets. And so now um, Rochelle's her name and it's okay because everybody knows her. Uh, Everybody (laughs) says that uh, she is the best CHW in the state of South Dakota and she works for the mission and she is on it. She gets people housing. She does amazing things. And so this is a person that was like struggling was like a zero. She thought she thought she was a zero. So what we did is we put a cape on her and made her a hero, you know? So we're, that's what we do at the mission. We're building people up, bringing stability. And so that's her, st- that's stable, right? So now she has her kid back. She's doing really good. She got a brand new car. Like she has her own place. All these things are happening for her because she chose to make the difference in her own life. We kind of pushed her that way. We kind of loved her that way. And so we, we challenged her to do better and she did. And then she took the responsibility now of being who she is. And so game changer, this, she is amazing and she's doing really well, but that's just one. And there's many others that, you know, we put in housing. One lady chronically homeless for 25 years, chronically homeless. I mean, and I'm like, what does that even mean? Because I, I couldn't even wrap my yeah. my mind about chronically homeless. And so she was in Arizona homeless and Las Vegas homeless mm. and California homeless. And then she went to Florida for homelessness. And I thought, okay, well, it's all tropical. That's good. And then <laughs> then she comes up here and she's homeless. And I'm like, you're homeless here in Sioux Falls. Like, that's bad. Like, you left the Garden States and all the beautifulness and to come up here. And she says, well, they have the services up here. And I said, okay. So she lived with us about a year and uh, we got her better and she's in housing and has a great job, you know, and doing really well. There's a guys during COVID um, from Minnesota, they, they, they shut down Minnesota. So these guys came down here. One guy's a mechanic and um, he just went to get a job and he's changing oil and because he, he didn't have his tools or anything. He just, so he says, I'm just going to get a job and stay with you guys. So he's staying at the mission. He got a job and he's changing oil and all of a sudden they've, there's a, he comes in and he goes, I need to get my tools. And I'm like, why? He goes, there's a job offer where I work. And I go, for what? And he goes, a diesel mechanic. And I'm like, oh. I said, didn't you tell him you're a diesel mechanic? He goes, yeah, but you got to show your certificate and everything. I don't have that. It's all up in Minneapolis. And I'm like, okay, well, let's find a way to go get that for you. You know? And so here's a guy making 20 bucks an hour, changing oil. Um, now he's making $75 an hour as a diesel mechanic or more. I don't know. Um, last year for Christmas time, he gave us a donation, uh, his first $5,000 donation. And so here's a guy that was homeless struggling 
that would give us a donation at, and because he remembers us. So like crazy success stories, like, and there's more. So it's great to hear those success stories and just hearing organizations like the union gospel mission of Sioux Falls changing lives every day like that. So Eric, what are some events that you guys have coming up? I know you have a big anniversary that's coming around the pike and maybe some volunteer opportunities with that as well. Yeah. So we always need volunteers to come down. We have a thrift store that we give out tons of stuff like all the time. Uh, we give out free clothing and shoes and things like that. So we always need help like, with resources is bringing it in and um, giving it out. And, but we need people to help sort it, you know? So like what, what is good, what is not at the mission. Sometimes they just bring us like, you know, stained clothes and stuff that's bad. Nobody wants that. So we become the dumping area, but so we have to actually bail it. And then we just, you know, get rid of it our own way. Um, we recycle the bad clothing. So that's good for us. Um, but we like good clothing, gently used or new uh, for those folks that are suffering on the streets. Because what's nice is that we can put good stuff on them and, um, and they can have clean clothes because a little bit of dignity is what they want. And that's what we want to give them. But in March coming up, we have... Um, are 124 years uh, of being in Sioux Falls. A long time. A long time. <laughs> you know, and you really think about 124 years in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. You know, I came from Hawaii. I get homelessness in Hawaii. It's really easy, you know, sleeping under a palm tree or something. It's great, you know, um, and on the beach, you can do it. Here, it's like, it gets really cold, you know, it, no snow yet, right? It's coming. Um, yes. Knocking on wood for that. <laughs> yeah. So, but we, you know, we're, it gets cold. I mean, the minus 30s and the minus 50s. And last year, you know, during the, the freeze, we had a pipe burst at the mission that flooded the whole place. Uh, well, our women's center just flooded everything. And so we just got through that and got it all cleaned up. And that was the community jumping in and doing things. But so volunteers are always needed because we have so much to do, so much to glean. Yeah. You know, we have, the one building is 43,000 square feet. Now that's just one building. <laughs> the other one is 42,000 square feet. Ah, so, you know, such so, a difference. Yeah. So we have two acres of buildings that we have to keep up and keep clean and and a lot of our guests do help with that but then there's other things like plumbing needs and electrical needs and all those other opportunities that you know guys with trades can come and volunteer painting you know inside outside we always need help doing stuff like that um but our celebration is really every day at the mission that we can have people come in and just sit and listen and hang out with guests to help them get better a lot of our guests need mentors they need somebody that would just really come to the side of them and help them along. Now, not everybody is going to get a mentor because there's a lot of mental illness going on down there um, on our street. It's There's a lot of stuff happening. Um, but we do have partners to help with the mental illness part of it. Um, but we do have uh, a lot of opportunities for people to just come and sit and listen. Yeah, awesome. And Eric, for anyone that wants more information about the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls, whether it's the anniversary coming up or the services that you offer, what's a good website or phone number that they can call? UGMSiouxFalls.com. So pretty simple, UGMSiouxFalls.com. Um, you can call our offices. You can volunteer. You can stop by. Um, we give tours on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you want to tour your group or if you have a company out there and you're listening to this right now and you're like, I want to bring my church group or I want to bring my company to come down and see what we can do to volunteer, um, we have opportunities for you to pay your employees to volunteer. And so if, there's a lot of groups that do that. And so we are open to you guys coming down and just taking a look, seeing hands on like what we do. So come and touch our walls and and see like for real what's happening down there. We give out food boxes on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, and we that's to the public. That's to anybody that's in need of food. We have it. We want to give it to you. So if you're in need and you're hearing this and, you know, if $80 will be able to stay in your pocket this week. We got food boxes for you. Yeah, awesome. Wonderful opportunities happening at the Union Gospel Mission of Sioux Falls. And Eric Weber, CEO of this great organization, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you so much.